Bienvenue à tout le monde. Welcome on Idrin. A practical information presentations will be um, on youthintransition.be. Okay, this is working. Look at this beautiful seal. The number of seals at our coast at the North Sea is growing. In spring, you can encounter an adolescent seal swimming straight forward. Does he know where he is going? Perhaps not. <clears throat> he leaves his family at the French coast to the west. He swims to the east. He feels attracted by the unknown. He enjoys the tension of danger and new experiences. Perhaps he will meet a new colony. Perhaps he will meet another seal that will catch his attention and that will provoke sexual desire in our young seal. People who are walking near the seashore are intrigued by the seals. People of all ages are attracted by their presence in the water or on the beach. If our seal was a human, we could imagine that people differ in how they would react to the seal's behavior. A variety of reactions between two poles. On the one hand, some people will warn for the real danger for the seal. Indeed, some of these young seals are victim of the motor ships in the harbor. For the unexperienced seal, swimming straight forward and swimming alone in the North Sea is a vital risk. On the other hand, some people will argue that this behavior is part of being adolescent. Leaving home and the search of a new family is part of the survival of the species and of the individual seal. Is this riskful behavior normal or pathologic? Some seals are too impulsive, even more at risk because of their adventure seeking. They are not prepared, not sufficiently mature when they start they, their trip towards the unknown future. A good assessment of the mental status of the seal is difficult and needs much experience with seals and with the specificity of this young age. Some people will be too much misled by superficial signs. Indeed, the rescue team at Blankenbergen receives calls for help about normal situations for the seals. People think that some seals are in danger or are suffering or are ill, for instance, because they find the seal resting on the beach. The encounter of the tourist and the seal at our coast reflects the problem of identifying normality, risk and pathology in adolescent life. Normal adolescent development causes risks. A sharp line between normal and pathologic does not exist. The picture at one moment is not sufficient to assess pathology. We need process and context information. Many family members and teachers and peers experience guilty feelings because they were aware of heavy problems of an adolescent too late. The confusion of unclear signs and the similarity of normal variation and pathology causes many problems for early diagnosis and intervention. The maturation of the brain needs an adaptive process of the family and the whole context of the adolescent. It takes time for the social environment and for the adolescent. The solutions of childhood don't work anymore. The adult solutions are not adapted even more. Let us leave the seal at the North Sea and have a look to another phenomenon in nature, the rose bush near the vineyard. You find these rose bushes near many vineyards. They have nowadays a more touristic and nostalgic function than some decades ago. Their original function was to show a beginning infection with mildew before the infection has reached the vineyard plants. 
The rose plant seems to be more vulnerable for the infection than the vineyard. The rose bush phenomenon is a metaphor for adolescence in society. Adolescents are more vulnerable and more sensitive to new trends, new phenomena. Youth cultures show new messages to the surrounding society. They show a mirror to the society with a greater focus on new things. Let's have a look at examples of rosebush phenomena. Nowadays, we are warned for the climate problems by the action of the young generation, like as the skull strike for climate. Young people are more sensitive and ready for action than older generations. They give new topics a great focus and make them very visible. In my youth, we had the May Revolution of 1968. In several great cities in Europe, students were on strike at high schools. Streets were broken up. It seemed as if law and order had lost any control on this generation. The movement had also impact on the whole economy when strike reached the industry. The French president de Gaulle stayed in a foreign country and didn't perceive in the beginning this crisis in Paris as a national threat. He thought it should be resolved with power and discipline towards the students. Now we know that the whole Western society was moving into a fundamental crisis and change process. Secularization, democratization, emancipation, individual rights were the themes of those days and the following decades. The adolescent generation was one of pioneers. Their actions were a sign that things were changing. Their behavioral problems were a reflection of a process in the whole society. The society was not prepared to react because this situation was too new. Cultural expressions can be confronting, cause risky behavior, influence other young people. We know these subcultures can both be a powerful transition vehicle and it can increase maladaptive convictions and behavior as well. The confusion we experience when confronted with some subcultural expressions is comprehensible. Sometimes society feels responsible and wants to forbid subcultures. For instance, the Russian Duma discussed about forbidding seen subculture in schools and governmental buildings. As far as I know, they didn't decide to forbid it. Today, we will speak about gaps and about bridges we have to make. Different gaps make transition psychiatry difficult. One gap is the one between society and adolescence. The challenge for society consists in finding equilibrium between different positions. Do not underestimate the emotional problems and the vulnerability of young people, but do not over-diagnose as well and focus on weaknesses where there is still flexibility and growth. In 2016, the Flemish Youth Council did a survey of more than 1,000 young people between 14 and 25 years. 38% of them feel bad and suffer from malfunctioning. It is difficult to know who of these adolescents need more help, need professional help, and who will manage this with the support of their social environment. This is a well-known picture that shows the age of onset of some important mental disorders. 75% of all psychiatric disorders have an age of onset before the age of 24, 50% before the age of 16. It warns us not to underestimate the risk of this lifetime period. Child and adolescent mental health services are confronted with an emerging number of new mental health problems during adolescence. These can be the onset of mental disorders for which the expertise is more coming in adult mental health services, for instance, with early onset psychosis. 
On the other hand, adult mental health services are confronted with the early onset of disorders during adolescence. They are less accustomed to work with families and the context and to take into, the account, into account the developmental process of the young patient. Gaps need bridges. I would like to remind you about the start of this initiative. Julie Ranson and Queen Fabiola gave birth to a foundation in the 50s and 60s, independently from each other. Both women had experiences with mental health problems in their personal surroundings and the lack of adapted care and support. They wanted to empower initiatives that improve the fate of persons with a mental problem and their relatives. In 2004 and 2008, both foundations decided to make a transition, it's really the topic of the day, to the King Baudouin Foundation. And so they became two funds of this King Baudouin Foundation. We felt that our missions were very similar and we started to work closely together. In the history of both funds, there has been a preference of projects that focus on the patient, the user, and his narrow surrounding. We wanted to increase the voice of the user and strengthen his influence on mental health care. A couple of years ago, the committee of the funds, Julie Ranson and Queen Fabiola and the King Baudouin Foundation, decided to focus in the following five years on transition from adolescence to adulthood in mental health. There was a great consensus that this topic is of great relevance. The gap between adolescent and adult mental health care is evident in Belgium as it is in other countries. Scientific research focused on the item. For instance, Adocare was a European expert report and Milestone followed 200 European adolescents and 800 controls in their experiences through mental health care. In Belgium, the governmental reform of mental health included transition age in the new child and youth, as well as in the adult mental health program. Several mental health care services on the field adapted their care offer. There are teams that focus on the transition lifetime group. There are other teams that do efforts to bridge the gap together with the adolescent and his family. The mental health funds administered by the King Baudouin Foundation aim to reinforce transitional care in Belgium and to invest in two chairs of transition psychiatry to promote research, education and knowledge sharing with those practicing in this area. One in Flanders and one in the Wallonia Brussels Federation. These chairs will put transition psychiatry on the map and contribute towards research and innovation in care for young people that is appropriate for this period in their lives, their lifestyle, and the spirit of our times. This call has been addressed to all universities in Belgium with a faculty of medicine. The purpose of the chair was to promote interdisciplinary scientific research into transition psychiatry. So the purposes were, were the following, give greater visibility to transition psychiatry, which is still a new subject, encourage and support vision development, research and innovation, guarantee the link to clinical practice, safeguard integration within the teaching that is provided, and promote networking amongst universities and between universities and both professionals and young people on an inter-community and international basis. The idea of a transition university chair seems atypical in the tradition of the funds. The call was a top-down initiative. I think it is a pleasure to discover that today, experienced experts and young people also get up to speak. We trust on the chairs that they will take into account that the voice of the experienced user, the adolescents and young adults, the concerned families will be heard clearly. I want to end my introduction by saying thanks to both selected teams and their leaders, Professor Lut van Winkel and Professor Veronique Delven, um, to the teams of the chairs 
and to the teams who also responded to the call but were not selected. Thanks to the members of the jury who had the hard task to make a selection between submitted projects that had all their own power and creativity. A difficult task. We needed a second round and additional question to come to an end decision. The president of the jury was Christian de Koster, also here among us today, former director general healthcare in the Federal Public Service of Public Health. Members of the jury were experts in child and adult psychiatry from outside Belgium. Barbara Dooley, Dean of Graduate Studies and Deputy Register, Dublin, Ireland. Philippe Jamais, Professor de Psychiatrie de l'Enfant et de l'Adolescent, Université Paris 5 in France. Marie Odile Krebs, qui est parmi nous, chef du service hospitalo-universitaire Centre Hospitalier Saint Anne, Paris in France. And Therese van Amersfoort, among us, Professor Transitional Psychiatry, Maastricht University in the Netherlands. A special word of thanks to the team of the King Baudouin Foundation who worked on the project. Tine van den Zande, Yves Dario, Anneke Ernon, Pascal Pret, and the members of the committees of World Funds at that time. Andal Cantara, Dirk de Wachter, Jan van Speybroek, Peter Paul de Dijn, Luc van Huffel, Marie-Céline Le Mestri, Philippe Henault, Annemie Rob, thanks to Professor Flip van Meerbeek, psychiatrist who reflected with us about our plans for the chair. A special gratitude to Andal Cantara. Welcome today and here in this meeting. Where are you? <laughs> okay. You are a formal, you are formal president of the Queen Fabiola Fund. We went to Maastricht together with Eve and Tine to drink a cup of Dutch coffee in the office of uh, Therese van Amersfoort, professor of the Dutch Transition Psychiatry Chair. We could check our ideas and confront with the Dutch experience. Thanks to Professor van Amersfoort, you increased our enthusiasm and contributed in this way to the kickoff of today. Enough about history now. Let's have a look to the chairs. We are ready for the kickoff. We believe in the power of the chairs and in the cooperation with the young people and their family, with the child and adolescent and adult mental health care professionals. I ask your attention for Professor Veronique Delven. She is uh, the team leader of the French speaking chair. Thank you for your attention.